Today's video is going to be a very special one. As we all know, protecting our world and changing our habits in order to preserve our environment is of utmost importance and something we should all be dedicated to. This is especially true when it comes to changing our agricultural practices, our farming techniques, and our fishing industries. In this video, I want to highlight some key efforts Taiwan is making right now, particularly by the Council of Agriculture, to not only improve the sustainability of these industries, but also to help reduce Taiwan's environmental impact, make the food grown here safer and healthier for its citizens, as well as creating incredible initiatives for farmers to switch to eco-friendly and organic farming. My hope is not only to show you the amazing things Taiwan is doing to improve its natural environment, but also to introduce to you many beautiful and undiscovered parts of this incredible island where I traveled to while filming this video. So without further ado, here are my top three reasons why Taiwan has become a beacon of hope and a nation to look up to with regards to sustainable agricultural practices in Asia. Good morning everybody, my name is Wes Davies. In this one, I want to tell the story of how in recent years, Taiwan has been making amazing progress in becoming one of the leaders of eco-friendly and organic farming in Asia. Specifically, I will highlight how these initiatives are not only helping to protect the soil, water, and environment, but are actually improving the lives of farmers in Taiwan and helping to provide safer food for its citizens. Recently, I heard a new policy from the Council of Agriculture in Taiwan where they're promoting an idea that schools all across the island should actually have fresh, local, and often organic food in their lunches. This idea really fascinated me, so I decided to come down here to the Hushan Elementary School in Pingdong County to check it out. At this point, I suited up and was invited into the school's kitchen, where the cooks are responsible for creating healthy lunches for over 1,000 students. On the day I visited, the meal was organic, locally sourced, and vegetarian. One of the most interesting things I've learned since coming to this school today is they actually have a dedicated nutritionist who's responsible for planning the meals and making sure that the students here are happy and healthy. So I wanted to ask you, what is the most important thing that you think about when you're planning the meals? Not only is this lunch incredibly delicious, but the students here get it for a very reasonable price. So let's go find out where it all came from. The Council of Agriculture, or COA, has actually set up a very ingenious supply chain for this healthy lunch catering service provided to schools all across Taiwan. It involves a central supplier where local and organic ingredients are shipped. This is a clean, organized, and efficient facility. There's an inspection technician who manually checks all incoming shipments as well as a small lab where he tests the food for quality control to ensure that it meets all health and safety requirements as mandated by the COA. All of these ingredients are supplied in accordance to the recommendations of professional nutritionists. As for where these ingredients are coming from, there is an emphasis on locally sourced meat and produce. I visited one of these organic farms and was amazed at the scale of the operation. I had a chance to speak with the farmer and explore his farm, which has been in his family for generations. It is amazing being here on this organic farm after seeing all those beautiful, fresh ingredients in the school lunches. Something interesting that the farmer just told me, in 2016, there was a terrible typhoon that wiped out many, many farms. And so in 2017, the government, the Council of Agriculture, uh, actually provided a lot of subsidies for the farmers and then they built all these beautiful greenhouses and ever since then, they've been growing fields like this. Mmm. I think my favorite thing about being at this farm, besides all the gorgeous green colors everywhere, is just being able to reach down like this and pick out some delicious hoja fresh green vegetables. Everything here that I've tasted so far just tastes so 
fresh and sweet. This is amazing. In my opinion, one of the best programs to come out of these policies is the introduction of the three stamps, one QR code system. Using this method, it is very easy to see not only the type of product that you're purchasing, but also by scanning the QR code, customers can trace exactly where their food came from and learn more about the product. Just as I was leaving, the farmer came out and gave me this little bag of cucumbers. And as you can see right here on the packaging, Taiwan organic, so you can tell which farm it came from, the address, phone number, and the serial number. So everything here is totally traceable. Next, I decided to head up to the Gongliao district in northern Taiwan, where I had the chance to explore an incredible example of Taiwan's effort to not only cultivate a rare breed of organic heirloom rice, but also learn how the native aquatic species in the area are being protected. Here we are. This is one of the best examples of eco-friendly farming I've ever seen. I've just come up here to the side of this mountain where we found these beautiful rice terraces built right into the side of the hill. And what makes these very, very special is not only do they produce organic rice, but in order to grow the rice, they don't use any fertilizers or pesticides, and they only use very small machinery to do the tilling in order to not disturb any of the natural plant life or especially the aquatic species that live in these rice pools. And honestly, I think this is a perfect example of the steps that Taiwan is taking to preserve the natural ecosystem of the island. Wow. wow. So when I mentioned that they only use small machinery, that's because they don't want to disturb the natural creatures that live in these rice pools. It's a beautiful little eel that lives here. So I understand that your father has worked on this land for over 70 years, and then you are now following in his footsteps. I was just wondering, what made you want to continue his work? Like father, like son. These two farmers, with the help of subsidies from the COA, are doing their part to help preserve this amazing environment high in the mountains of Taiwan. I just made it down to this tiny little town called Gongliao, and we're in this shop which is connected to those beautiful rice terraces we just visited. And in fact, this rice came from those fields. You can recognize this is that old man that we met today, and that was such a wonderful experience. In addition to being environmentally friendly on land, Taiwan has spared no effort in marine life conservation. From fishing ports like these, offshore fisheries, and even ocean fisheries, Taiwan has made amazing efforts to sustain the marine environment and resources. One major tool that has been helping this industry is the implementation of fish marketing projects. The idea is that the more information people know about the fishing industry in Taiwan, the easier it will be for them to adopt a caring attitude toward the ocean. Learning about different kinds of seafood and proper ways to prepare them will also increase the viability of the fishing industry as the public becomes more aware of their buying options. Up here in Jilong, they actually have this beautiful center where they focus on fish education. So they make these delicious meals and they teach the public on which types of fish to eat at certain times of the year, as well as the importance of eating locally. So now, more than ever, the health of the oceans is a primary concern for everyone. So I was just wondering, what are some things that are being done to help improve the marine sustainability? She let me know that in the past, the harbors around northern Taiwan had a pretty serious pollution problem. But in recent years, changes to government policy, such as proper catch, logging, and monitoring programs, as well as efforts from the fishermen themselves, such as creating ocean protection and cleanup teams, the situation has improved dramatically. Through the combined efforts of the communities and fishermen, a lot more is being done to protect the coastal areas and make the seaside more beautiful. Coming here to the gorgeous coastal waters of Taiwan, just like what you can see behind me, they've adopted various management measures for important fisheries and fish species in order to create sustainable fishery resources in this region. I understand that you've been fishing here your entire life, but recently things have started to change. Can you please tell me a little bit about that? He let me know that more and more of these waters are being protected. 
There are now frequently held fishing conventions where captains jointly manage all the fish resources of the area. This includes implementing operation periods and ban periods as a way of reducing overfishing, especially during the critical breeding times of the year. This is all in accordance with the high standards of international ocean conservation methods. In fact, a fishing monitoring center has been set up to perform a wide variety of tasks, including making it easier for authorities to know how many fish are caught per boat per day to avoid overfishing, as well as assisting in emergency rescue operations. An onboard observer has been put in place on fishing vessels to record all ocean activity and offloading declarations. The strengthened importance put on the monitoring of all fishing activities has allowed Taiwan to be moved from an EU yellow card status to a green card status due to its commitment to fulfill its responsibilities and promote sustainable fishery development on the island. It's clear to me that other Asian countries could learn a lot from what Taiwan is doing. From its eco-friendly farming initiatives like the Organic School Lunch Program to its responsible policies regarding fishing and marine life conservation, Taiwan really seems to be doing it right. It was such a pleasure to make this video, travel all around Taiwan, and learn more about this important topic. For more information, please feel free to visit the Council of Agriculture website, which I will link in the description below. Thank you so much for watching everybody, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.